Yes, yes, the people, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the video. I was thinking that it's been a while since we did any cooking videos and therefore we must remedy that situation and that is what we're about to do today. So we're gonna do some high protein breakfast ideas because I just feel like we could probably all reach a consensus that breakfast is categorically the best meal of the day, right? It's official. So let's just do it. All right, so first up, we're gonna make a frittata. That's basically a baked omelet. So think about like a quiche, but without the pastry. Pastry's a shit bit anyway, isn't it? let's face it, no one eats a pastry. So here are your ingredients. However, as with an omelet, you can pretty much put anything in it. So, you know, exercise your freedom. I'm gonna go with some feta cheese, some tender stem broccoli, and some spring onions. I also forgot to film an almond milk shot, almond, an almond milk shot. <laughs> like not me doing a shot of almond milk, I mean a shot of almond milk. Anyway, here's one I filmed uh, later. So first up, chop stuff up. I would go with fairly small pieces because we're just gonna fry this, so it needs to be, you know, friable chunks, mate. Right, then you can just throw that stuff in the frying pan with a bit of the oil of your choice. Gonna go with a medium heat and just be careful not to overcook your veg because it's still gonna go in the oven for like 15 to 20 minutes. So we're just starting them off in the pan really. If you leave them too long, you'll just end up with soft broccoli, which is less than ideal, particularly if it's been left in the fridge for a day or two, which this can be. All right, so preheat the oven to 200 degrees if it's a fan oven. If it's not, just Google the conversion. And then whilst the veg is on, I'm gonna make the egg mix. So I'm using six eggs, 150 ml of egg whites, and a drop of almond milk. You can use any milk you like. I'm seasoning with salt, pepper, and some smoked paprika. Paprika, do you, do you emphasize that? I, I struggle with this every cooking video. Anyway, then just give it a mix around until it's mixed. Now, you're best using a shallow dish of some kind. I didn't have a round one, and I wanted this to be round because frittatas are traditionally round. So I'm gonna use this cake tin with a removable bottom. Now, it isn't watertight, so I'm gonna let that heat up in the oven so that when I pour the egg in, it should seal the gaps and not leak out. That's the plan. I have this flan tray underneath it for just an added layer of defense, but don't be like me, just use, I don't know, maybe just do what you want, right? Right, I'm gonna chop a chunk of feta ready to crumble. I think you get a good return on investment for feta, just in terms of like flavor versus calories. A little goes a long way. And then when the veg is done, pull the dish out of the oven, dump everything in there. You might want to mix your veg around if you care about even distribution. Then just give it 20 minutes or so. It might take a little bit longer if yours is deeper. So it does depend on the diameter of your dish and the total volume within it. And then eventually we're done. The edges will cook faster than the middle, but that's fine. Just gives it a bit of character, mate. So I'm gonna eat half of this now and then I'm gonna cling from the rest when it's cooled down. Keep it in the fridge until tomorrow and eat the rest cold. So depending on the veg that you use, you can keep it in the fridge for a couple of days at least. So feel free to make a massive one and then have it a few days on the run. All right, next up, we're gonna make some protein pancakes. So ingredients as follows, eggs, egg whites, They're optional, you could just use more eggs if you wanted to. I'm using quark, but you can use natural yogurt, skier, or cottage cheese even. I know that might sound kind of weird, but just don't worry about it. You're not gonna actually taste cottage cheese in your pancakes. Uh, oats, if you have a blender, or if you don't, you could just use flour, or if you just can't be bothered blending, you can use flour. And flour will also like give your pancakes a more even color, so it'll be kind of more aesthetic. So, you know, if you're posting them on Instagram, maybe just use plain white flour or self-raising flour will also work fine. Uh, whey protein powder or just any protein powder or none really because they'll be fairly high protein anyway because of your eggs and quark slash cottage cheese uh, bicarb or bacon powder just to help with the thickness and then some almond milk or any other kind of milk and then finally whatever you want to put on top of them so i'm going to go with maple syrup and blueberries then basically, right, pay attention because this method is uh, complex, right? What you do, you just mix everything together. So I'm going to use a blender, but you can use a whisk if you really like manual labor. Or you can just like put it in a bowl and use a stick blender, whatever you want, right? Just got to work with the tools you've got, right? I typically just wing the amounts and then aim for like a decent consistency. But I'll put some actual amounts on the screen if you're not that kind of confident slash reckless in your pancake escapades. So 
So once it was done, I replaced the lid with one that I can just pour straight out of because I want to have like tight control over how much batter is going into the pan so that my pancakes can be like fairly uniform and hopefully it will encourage everyone to like my YouTube video. So if your consistency is a bit thin, you can just add more oats or flour and re-blend um, or vice versa if it's too thick. It's not, thick. it's not too thick, mate. There's no such thing. So yeah, just fry your pancakes. I prefer frying in butter, but you can use whatever you like. And I also pressed some blueberries into the pancakes as they were frying. Then just stack them up and knock them down, man. Hit them with that berry and maple syrup combo, or whichever is your chosen combination. Just a final tip, like be careful not to overcook your pancakes, like once they have the turgidity, is that a word? Once they're like, you know, physically robust enough to flip, flip, like don't think like, oh shit, I gotta like, let shit cook and that, nah, just, just flip it as soon as it can be flipped. Alright, we're gonna make an epic breakfast bagel, so you're gonna need a bagel, some bacon or turkey bacon, cheese, I went with mature cheddar, but you can just get those little, like, peasanty cheese slices if you like peasant stuff, uh, avocado and finally some butter. Yeah, I'm actually relatively self-conscious about how I pronounce butter. Anyway, I'm going to slice this avocado but in hindsight it would have been better to mash it. I will elaborate on that later so just like stick with me, right? So I'm going to stick that turkey bacon under the grill and then I'm going to get two frying pans out. So one is for the egg, one is for the bagel. So instead of toasting this bagel, which is an option, right, I'm actually just going to like butter it and then kind of fry it so as you would do with like a toasted sandwich right again I have some butter in the other pan and then I'm using this pastry cutter ring thing for my egg because I want it to fit nicely on the bagel right I don't want it like slapping everywhere so you gotta have that uniformity haven't you so bagel halves go in as does the egg and then I'm gonna cover that egg so the top cooks without having to actually flip it and risk the yolk crack so you gotta keep checking that bagel and when it's done just remove it lay on your slice of cheese now stick with me here because i'm going to show you where i went wrong with this assembly process right i went cheese bacon egg then avocado on top of the egg right and this is the finished product right so so it looks fine yeah could have got away with it no it's not fine right because this avocado for a start was squirming everywhere as if it was like trying to escape that's what happens when you put avocado chunks on top of an egg, right? Eggs are pretty slippy, right? Do you know what I mean? You don't learn that from Mario Kart. You just think it's banana skins, don't you? Eggs are slippy as well, right? Then, I went for the cross section. This is what I saw, right? Now, you might, again, think, oh, that's fine. You know, carry on. Hit me with the next breakfast idea. But we ain't aiming for fine. Do you know what I mean? That's not how we do things, right? And I'm blaming this non-runny yolk on the fact that I was running around, like, moving a camera and a tripod, trying to juggle filming stuff with actually making the thing, so... Anyway, I told myself that wasn't the person I was going to be. I had a higher, you know, standard for myself. So, went back the following day and I made this. Now, you immediately noticed that I went cheese, bacon, avocado, then egg. Much better assembly choice there. I actually went one better and cooked two eggs this time. So, let me just show you this cross-section, hopefully redeem myself. Alright, I'll just collect all of your likes now, please, yeah. I'll just take them in now. Alright, finally we're going to make some peanut butter and protein oat bars. So this is not one for the faint of heart or for those currently dieting, so step outside if you are not prepared to see me putting 100 grams of peanut butter into a single recipe, right? So for this one you're going to need some protein powder of your choice, some oats, I'm using porridge oats, you can use rolled oats if you prefer, uh, a lot of peanut butter, some almonds which are optional, some sultanas or other dried fruit dates actually would have been ideal so if you have those go with those and then some maple syrup or honey. So first blend together the oats and the protein powder. I used 200 grams of oats and 100 grams of protein powder. Don't worry I'm not eating this all at once right. So then you're basically just gonna add everything else. I used just over 100 grams of peanut butter, 50 grams of sultanas, and then a couple of healthy glugs, or unhealthy glugs of maple syrup. Then just give it a few pulses until it's all mixed well. You might have to take it off and scrape some of the mixture down from the sides a couple of times. Mine was a little bit dry, so I added a drop of water and also a drop of almond milk. You want a consistency that's kind of like cookie dough, although it might feel a little bit more sticky because of the whey and the sultanas. 
then just pack it down into a dish on some greaseproof paper. Try and pack it pretty tightly if you want a dense, chewy bar. And then finally, chop your almonds up and sprinkle those on top. Then you can just chuck it in the freezer. I would give it a good half an hour. If it's a bit too sticky when you take it out, then just put it back in for a bit. Eventually you should be able to chop it up into bars without it sticking to itself too much. So I would say keep these in the freezer. It really depends on like how sticky slash wet slash dry you made them, right? Mine, mine were like a little bit on the wet side to be honest, but if they are like super moist and sticky, I would keep them in the freezer and then just pull them out like, you know, b before you're gonna eat them. Like they only need like a few minutes out of the freezer before you can actually, before they're fully edible from fully frozen. Um, otherwise you might be able to get away with keeping them in the fridge. All right, anyway, that is it. That is four high protein breakfast ideas from me to you. You're welcome. Like my shit. Subscribe to my shit. See you in a bit. Ciao, ciao. Sayonara. They see me rolling. They hate him. Joe Delaney is my hero.